Hey, my name's Scott. I'm a food and commercial photographer based in the UK. And today I'm gonna to go through a few options for what might be the best lens for food photography. Now I'm with Canon equipment at the moment and most of these lenses you can buy with other brands as well. Failing that for things like Sony, you can definitely get adapters for some of them. But it's, you know, lenses are much of a muchness when it comes to 35 millimeter cameras. And the ones we're looking at today are pretty standard, pretty generic. Apart from one, which we'll save till the end, which I think if you really are a dedicated food photographer, and that's all you want to be doing, it's probably the lens to go for. But to start with, we're gonna go for something very generic. If you're into photography and you want to start shooting food, and perhaps you already own the kit lens or a zoom lens, the first thing you should buy is a 50 millimeter prime. Now, I don't use zoom lenses for anything anymore. I just because I specialize in food, I don't need versatility. I'm in a studio, it's under my control, and it's still life. The 50 millimeter lens is great, and they come in at all different price points. For Canon, you get one for about 100 pounds, then you get one for about 400 pounds, then 1200 pounds. And there's also the Sigma Art version, which I use, which is about six, 700 pounds. If you're in the States, uh, add a little bit onto that. So for every 500 pounds, it might be about $575, for example. All of them are great. And the way that you should choose whether you're spending the 100 pounds or 1200 pounds is how much money you have in your bank. That is it. There's no point in going, well, you, you really need a 1200 pound lens to be a food photographer because you don't. If you need a 1200 pound lens because the sort of work you're doing, you probably have enough money to buy that and you're not having that debate. So the quality of lens you buy, the only thing which should determine it is how much you can afford to spend on it. If you've got time to save for it, then absolutely go for that. But 51.8 from Canon, Nikon have one as well. I'm sure other brands have a similar sort of like plastic nifty 50. For hundred pounds, you will not get a better bang for buck. Now the 50 millimeter focal length is great. It allows you to do big flat lays, you can get a little bit close. You know, for a small fee, you can turn it into a macro lens and all you need to do, rather than buying a specific macro lens, is buy an extension tube. And this goes between the camera and the lens and it just allows you to get really close to your subject. I'll put a link to these in the description. I had never heard of them when I started out in food photography. Then, well now, I use them all the time. Now, the 50 millimeter, fo 50 millimeter focal length has its pros and cons. It is a little bit too wide to do those super detailed shots. It's a little bit too long to do really wide angle flat legs, but it is a great starting point. Most food photographers start off with a 50 millimeter, then they get a 100 millimeter, then they'll either get a 35 or a 24 if they're doing huge, you know, monstrous flat legs. So it's a great starting place. If you're only going to have one lens and you want it to be versatile into other forms of photography, the 50 millimeter is a great starting point when food is your primary focus. Now, if it's gonna be food you're shooting exclusively, there's another lens which I think is better than this, but we'll get into that later. The next lens I think is a really good food photography lens is the 100 millimeter. It's one of a sort of two lens combo that most food people use. And it's great for those detailed shots when you're shooting at sort of a 45 degree angle and you want to really compress all of the background in. I'm using the Zeiss Milvus, which is about a $1,600 or $2,000 lens. But before that, I had a 200 pound lens, which is about, I don't know, $275-ish, depending on whether you're watching this before or after Brexit, I guess. It's, it's a great focal length, but it's not the one you want to buy first. If you have that, you're gonna be stuck to tight shots only. Now, if you already know that in the niche in food photography that you're going into, that's all you're gonna to have to do, then absolutely go for it. But if you want versatility, the 50 millimeter lens will just far outperform that. It's actually my favorite lens that I have optically, but it isn't, you know, I'm going traveling soon and I'm not gonna take a 100 millimeter prime with me because all I can take is telephoto shots. I'd much rather have a wider lens where I can be a bit more versatile with it. And the 50 millimeter absolutely offers that. It's also a lot more expensive. Even going in at the budget end, it is nearly twice the price of a nifty 50. Now, these two lenses are all great. And if you're going to go into like a, a versatile sort of thing, you know, you're probably still shooting portraits, you're shooting weddings, whatever it may be. Having a lens like the Sigma Art series where it's got autofocus is great. The Zeiss Milvus doesn't have autofocus, it's a bit more specialist, but you can get a 100 millimeter autofocus prime. And that's great too. Now, depending on your budget, if you're coming in at around the price point of a Sigma Art lens, somewhere around the 500 pound price point, 
and you really, really want to specialize in food and food is all you're really thinking about in terms of buying this lens, there is a better option. Now, it's not often talked about, it's a bit of a niche lens. You definitely wanna buy it secondhand because there's no autofocus, so not a lot can go wrong. But this here is the 45 millimeter tilt shift from Canon. Nikon have a version, I don't know about other brands, but you can definitely get adapters for them. The reason I would choose this over an autofocus 50 millimeter 1.4, keep in mind this is a 2.8, is that you can almost turn this into two lenses. I'm gonna show you how now by carefully not smashing my cameras. So whilst this has the same roughly 50 millimeter, it says 45, excuse all my tethering cables, 50 millimeter focal length, which is great. And it, you know, it goes down to 2.8 because so we've got a lovely shallow depth of field at 2.8. The optics are almost as good as the Sigma. It's a bit of a dated design, but it's, you know, it's beautiful optics. It has an extra benefit to it. It can double up as a 24 millimeter lens whilst increasing your camera's resolution. Now, if you're just starting out with photography, don't get this, you will have a nightmare of a time. But if you've been doing photography for a while and you really wanna get into food, this could be the tool for you. What this allows me to do is to put my camera on a tripod pop it into landscape orientation, and then do a lens shift three times to create a landscape image. So I'm hoping we can see this. I'm just gonna pop this in here. So start with the lens here and we take a shot. We move the lens into the middle and take a shot. And then we point it to the side and take another shot. It doesn't seem like it's moving a great deal, but this lens is going backwards and forwards along the camera. And once you've taken those three shots, there's an auto merge setting in Lightroom which will turn it into a panoramic. So this is a 50 megapixel camera. It will give me about a 110 megapixel file. And when the camera's in portrait, it will make a landscape image and it will give me the same field of view as a 24 millimeter lens. If you're doing flat lays, if you need more resolution, if you need to be wider, but without getting the distortion of getting a wide lens and being at the same distance, this is an absolutely brilliant tool for the job. It has other great features, functions, uses, in that you can adjust the focal plane here, but that's a lot more advanced. It's probably not something, if you're watching a video, like what's the best food lens to get, that you're looking for at this stage, but you know, maybe two years down the line, this will be a feature that you'll really want to get into because it, it offers great creativity. It allows you to do things to the images in terms of increasing the depth of field without losing image quality as well. But I think if you are a diehard food photographer and that's all you want to do, and you only want to buy one lens for the same price as this 50 millimeter with autofocus, you can buy a 45 millimeter tilt shift secondhand, and it will give you a 24 millimeter field of view with a bit of panoramic work, super high resolution, medium format looking images, and a similar standard 50 millimeter focal length at 2.8. Try not to smash my cameras. So that's my advice. That's my thinking behind this. A lot of it depends on one, how much money you have. If you've only got a hundred pounds, don't go and spend a thousand pounds. It doesn't matter. When I started food photography, I had a 35 and an 85 millimeter lens because I came from a portrait background and I had to make it work because I didn't have the funds to invest in other kits. If you've got a lot of money, go for the 50, buy the 100 millimeter lens, have that two lens combo, you'll be set for the next five or six years of learning food photography. If you're really just going all in for food, you're gonna be on a tripod, autofocus doesn't matter, get the 45 millimeter tilt shift, it will offer you things that you know, most people won't have at their disposal. It's a lens that I use all the time and I absolutely love it. I hope this video was of some use to you. If you're enjoying this content, please do subscribe. I'm trying to put out a couple of videos each week at the moment. I'm slowly learning. I've got some new audio, so hopefully it sounds a bit better. Hopefully my English accent is now being understood as it wasn't at first. It turns out 100 people per video are putting English subtitles on to listen to me. I will do something about that. Don't panic. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.